Hello, I'm Jack Killian. And I'm David Altenhofer. And in this video, you will learn about passive filters. We'll talk about the differences between high pass and low pass filters. So pay close attention and enjoy. So you're probably wondering what exactly is a low pass or a high pass filter. Well, a high pass filter will allow high frequencies to pass through it, versus a low pass filter will allow low frequencies to pass through it. So our circuit setup this week is pretty simple compared to some of them in the past. All we're going to do is have our input power source, and then we'll be using a, a resistor and a capacitor, and then measuring our V out of our circuit. So depending on whether we're doing a low pass or a high pass, we'll determine the order of our resistor and our capacitor. So if we're doing low pass, we'll have our resistor first, followed by our capacitor in series, and then we'll have our V out will be measured in between our resistor and capacitor. And for high pass, we will just flip the order of our capacitor and resistor, and we'll still take our V out at the same point. We used a DAC in LabVIEW to compare V in with V out, and as you can see, we got a nice Nyquist plot going until the very end with the high frequencies. Um, up until that point though, it was pretty good data. As you can see, we have the 0.707 at 45 degrees, which is accurate. So we wanted to also show you a better graph as well, so we used P-Spice to do that. So here's a low pass filter with a high frequency. Right now the frequency is at 10,000. So when you run that, you can see a very nice graph. V out is trailing V in, which you would expect with a low pass filter. Now as you can see with a low frequency, V in and V out is al are almost perfectly in phase, which is what's expected with a low pass filter. Now, when a high pass filter is at a low frequency, such as this, you'll see that VN is actually leading V out, which is what we'd expect, even though it seems kind of illogical. As you can see, this is a high pass filter at a high frequency. When we run the simulation, you can see that the VN and V out are almost perfectly in phase, which is what we expect. Now, we also use P Spice to create a bold magnitude plot. We ran a simulation through this low pass filter, cycling the frequencies from a low frequency to a high frequency. As you can see, it's a very nice bone magnitude plot. It follows exactly what we expect. Remember that it goes by frequency and not omega naught. Omega naught is a change in the angle, not the actual frequency. So our graph is correct and accurate. So I'm going to show you a few sample calculations we did for with first our high pass filter. So we first started out by using a voltage divider to set up for our V out compared to our using our V in and our resistance from our resistor and from the capacitor. <coughs> and then we also stated that W naught equals 1 over RC. And then this simplifies down to this equation. And then we're going to use different omegas to see uh, what results we get. So first we'll start with a omega of approaching zero, and we get zero J, which gives us a phase of 90 degrees. And then next we'll go to omega approaching omega naught, which we simply get one half plus one half J, which results in a phase of 45 degrees. And then finally, we plugged in omega as it's approaching infinity, and we simply get one over one, which can be simplified to one, and that has a phase of nine, uh, excuse me, a phase of zero degrees. And then at the bottom, we just have our MA and our phase plots, which are based off our data from, that we calculated from our omega naught give you a nice close-up of them. So our low-pass calculations started out the same way with first we used our voltage divider again except for this time our capacitor resistance was on top and we also stated that W naught was still equal to 1 over RC so we simplified this equation down and then we started out with our Omega approaching zero, which we got one, which would have a phase change of zero. 
And then as omega approaches omega naught, we got one half minus j over two, which would have a phase of 45 degrees. And then next we took omega as it approaches infinity, and this calculated out into zero. And then our phase was 90 degrees. So for our graphs at the bottom, they're pretty much uh, the opposite of our high pass filter. So, if you're wondering what's the main difference between active and passive filtering, is the use of an op amp during your active filter. Stay tuned for next week's edition where we blow stuff up with an infrared reader.